allow your eyes to go into soft focus. Let's turn our attention to the space behind our eyes. We are subtle beings. We actually are souls who have physical bodies. I am the soul. I am separate from my body. I, the soul, am the wise guide of my body. I use my body to play my action part. My true form is a tiny point of divine light deep within my forehead. I am a peaceful soul. My inner nature is wisdom. I, the soul, am calm and alive. I wisely guide my mind and body. <clears throat> I am a peaceful soul. Om Shanti. So I'm returning to notice my environment, its temperature, the support from the floor, the sounds in my room and outside. Hmm. This is my world. I take a deep breath and enjoy my eyes returning to their focused vision. And I look at something of beauty and notice how that feels in my body. I'm glad I have that picture on the wall. Now I know why. And perhaps if you haven't already, stretch your fingers and toes. I'm going to invite you to be interactive with me. I'm challenging you, aren't I, Elizabeth? Let's see if this will work. I wonder what sensation information you are receiving from your body right now. For instance, how warm or cool are you? Do you feel your heart beat? Is it beating rapidly or slowly? Do you perhaps feel your breathing? And can you notice if it's moving your chest, your belly, somewhere else? And what is happening in your gut? Do you hear or feel any gurgling? Are you noticing any particular muscles? Do they want to move or find a more comfortable resting position? I'm going to ask you to unmute and share. Vinod, are you willing to do that? Yeah. <clears throat> Feel comfortable. Comfortable. And where do you feel that in your body right now? In my mind. Mm -hmm. My heart. Thank you for sharing. Mahalo. Fern, I wonder if you've noticed 
anything interesting in your body with this little exercise? Are you available to unmute? Yes. Um, relax belly, uh, slower breathing, calm. Ah. Mahalo. Thank you for sharing. I'd like to define interception and intuition. They're so interconnected. The term interoception comes from neuroscience. It is one's ability to actually feel their body, their different physical states. It is the ability to sense and perceive sensations from inside our body. Interoception provides stronger connection between the mind and the body. It is a vital part of intuition. Intuition is a natural inner source of information that is accessible to the degree we are aware of our whole self, body and soul. The territory of intuition ranges from gut feelings to spiritual insights of our conscience, perhaps. Many people have developed the habit of thinking their way through life and have grown to trust their mind alone to guide them. They're quite cut off from sensations of the body. And it's often a survival strategy. They're unable to share from their heart as they're not tuned into their heart. Their world revolves around thoughts and decisions and understanding and opinions and tendencies and memories in a random way. There's a lack of harmony among these subtle expressions of the soul. Authenticity suffers. Happiness is limited. This chaotic state of the soul combined with being cut off from sensations of the body produces inaccurate intuition. Take a deep breath. Settle yourself in your chair. I'm going to go back in time and share a story. My mother was born prematurely. This means her digestive functions were not fully developed yet. She had to swallow milk to survive. In such a situation, the gut struggles with inflammation. And this affects our breathing, for instance, because the diaphragm avoids dropping down into that hot mess. Did you ever think of how the movements happen in us? If you watch a baby sleeping, their belly rises and falls. They take an inhale, their diaphragm moves down to pull the oxygen in, and that pushes their guts up toward the ceiling. But when there's inflammation in the gut, we don't want to feel those things. So there becomes very little movement. Even the lymphatic flow stops, our muscles brace. And this literally cuts us off from our gut feelings. Our intuition is off. My mother survived, I'm here, with a strategy to be strong. She controlled her world. She still does. When I was born, she carefully took care of me. She freely talked to me. I was very needy. I had those infant expectations that all my physical and emotional needs would be met. I needed mom to 
read my sounds and my movements and my facial expressions before I would have to resort to whimpering or bawling. Sometimes it was simple messages. I want more or less eye contact right now. I want food now. I need a new position. We can't do anything for ourselves in those early months. But as my mom had been born prematurely, she didn't have good digestion nor intuition. And I was nonverbal. It wasn't a match made in heaven. Our bonding and attachment was challenged. They tell us that 70% of communication is nonverbal, but she wasn't able to pick up mine. Accurate intuition would have required her to perceive those subtle sensations from inside her body to read mine. I adapted. I'm still here. I became a good baby never asking for anything. I had the adaptation strategy of prioritizing this important relationship over my needs. I used lots of muscle bracing not to feel my body. I disconnected myself from my intuition. I missed being able to trust this valuable guidance. For instance, one day when I was a freshman in college, the Protestant chaplain called and made an appointment. Arriving at his office, the curtains were all drawn, but I took no meaning from that. When it became clear that his intention was not counseling, but reaching down my pants, I froze. I presume I wasn't breathing. I was probably feeling flushed. A stress response was happening in my physiology. But I was so used to living in my head. I did not track or trust messages from my body or my intuition. I was automatically living from that young survival strategy of placing others' needs before mine. I wondered why I was so prudish. I was not aware that I was living in a disconnected state at that time. That's risen gradually with my continuing education, especially the last two years studying a process of trauma healing accelerated. I never spoke of that incident for decades. Our body is so smart that it notices everything that is going on inside and around us. It notices things and gives us signals. We are picking up the signals both unconsciously and consciously we can decide to listen to our sensations and signals. We get to decide what they mean. We decide how to respond. Hmm. Let's see what our body says after we jump up and down. Ready? Let's get interactive. Everybody, please stand up. Now, if it's comfortable for you, jump 10 times. You may choose to dance with your arms and legs instead. Thank you for playing. And now you can please sit down. And I wonder, what do you notice? Do you feel revved up? Where do you feel that in your body? 
Is your heart beating loudly or softly now? Are you cool or hot? <laughs> Notice, are you breathing fast or slowly? Do your muscles feel soft or tense? What is most noticeable for you? Any newness? I wonder, Mary, if you'd be willing to unmute and share. All right. Thank you. I notice that my gut is uncomfortable. Mm. That's very clear. Thank you for your courage and for sharing it. Deborah or Jim, I wonder if one of you is able to unmute. What are you noticing in your body now that we did something that was sympathetically stimulating? Hi. Can you... Hi, Jim. I'm trying. I don't see anything. No, just talk. I hear your voice. You've oh, got it. Oh, okay. That's good. Hi, everybody. I feel uh, a bit more alive a lot more life energy in my extremities, a little oh. bit in my smile. So something like that. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing, Jim. Oh, you're very, very welcome. It's good to be with at least some of us here. So we've been looking at the responses our body has to life events, meditation, exercise, our autonomic nervous system has functions that get us moving when we need it, like for exercise, or if there's some emotionally induced situation, well, such as the familiar fight or flight response, if you're a first responder. Imagine working diligently to extract a victim from a car and transporting them to the hospital. And then only afterwards does a colleague point out that you have a bleeding wound on your leg that you hadn't even been aware of. That first responder was accurately focused on the external factors around him. His energies were not directed inward until afterwards. And then his system comes back to that balance. This is the way our nervous system serves us. It becomes challenged, however, if stressful life events stack up. It can create a chronic stress situation. And all those chemicals that are meant to give us the energy for that moment are flooding us all the time and creating problems. It causes what's called dysregulation of our autonomic nervous system. And it's associated with issues from chronic digestive problems to cognitive deficits. And that's because when we're threatened with physiological overwhelm, and that's what would happen if our heart kept beating faster and faster, we wouldn't be able to tolerate it. So the body very wisely uses this dorsal vagal freeze response. And we stop feeling what's going on inside us and around us. That's the freeze. Our nervous system is saving our life. It's shutting us down. It's hard on our body, though. None of our digestive functions work. We're not creative. We're not interactive with others. If we're noticing what's going on, we're not happy about it, but perhaps don't have any other strategies and don't realize there's any way to interact that can change this pattern. Because intuition is only accurate when we are in our bodies, I have found the vital first step to healing 
to creating experiences of safety in present time is feeling what's going in our in our body moment to moment. The way I've been exposed to this that has been so safe and effective is called somatic experiencing. Such as when we begin our meditation, noticing our outward senses before turning within. And with them to notice experiences that felt safe. Perhaps we need to add to that side of the balance to bring our body back around to connect with our soul and all of its subtle but important functions. With this somatic experiencing practice, we learn how to identify what nervous system state we're in. Then we can respond with tools to move us into that calm and alive state called the parasympathetic state. We were experiencing, wanting our mind to be connected with our body, listening to the interchange between both. We have this longest nerve in the body the vagus nerve that gives information between our gut and our brainstem and between our brainstem and our gut. We're meant to be connected. That's how we function well and wisely. As we get some of these tools under our belt, and like anything new, they require daily practice, then we begin to Look at ourselves more deeply, perhaps face survival strategies that we've picked up. And they can look like eating disorders, being shy. Instead, we can put energy now into becoming a good trustee of our gut health and learning how to love ourselves and develop those experiences of authenticity that make life feel so meaningful. An excellent skill that also moves us in this direction is Raja Yoga meditation. For some people, it's not easy to sit still and meditate because of this other order, disorder of dysregulation. So by starting with the calming experiences, they improve their ability to benefit from meditation. We know in the meditative state, there is this calming that comes out in our body. Our breathing tends to become deeper and slower. This is our natural default creative life place and we're reinforcing it the more often we practice meditation and it's certainly possible to combine those exercises from somatic experiencing to help us feel safe but to help us feel contained with meditation i found they potentiate each other beautifully Some people have discovered movement is a very important way that they stay connected with their body. I think that's what served me beautifully because in high school, I found myself drawn to being a cheerleader. I didn't trust my dancing skill at that time, but the moment I had my first job, I began taking jazz dancing classes one night a week. And now I practice and teach Tai Chi. I also dance in circles with people, folk dancing. I love the feeling I get when people are moving together. I think it regulates my nervous system very beautifully. For others, 
music does that. I had a friend who created a healing modality she called spirit singing. When she would allow herself to connect within and let sounds emerge, these were not scripted. There wasn't a score or words. They were tones. And they varied in volume and in pitch. And they left her feeling aware of more of herself. Sometimes they would take her to insights that she had never had before. And she began having circles in her home teaching others to do this. Whatever is a good match for our individual self, it's worth prioritizing it in our daily schedule. That's the trick. Meditation. Practiced over time creates changes in our whole being, as do these other tools. We can overcome life experiences. They've given us learning. And now we have a chance with great motivation to apply that learning diligently, daily. By building these skills of not only feeling safe in our own body and trusting our thoughts and feeling messages, those subtle messages of intuition and the sensations from our body that say, oh, it's time to rest, instead of the mind just saying, yes, but we have to finish this. The body gets an equal voice. That's respect. We begin to be happier and healthier. We learn to live from our true authentic self. I think we're giving our soul the lead. We're giving our healing self the front seat and our trauma self and all of its adaptive patterns start to wither on the vine. Like any new skill, regular practice is important. So let's once again do some meditation and I'll guide you in a somatic exercise. Where you are sitting, can you take off one shoe, bring your foot up into your lap, and use a finger to gently push into the sole of your foot? When was the last time you took time to do that? So laugh a little. And if you need to put a footstool in front of you to be able to reach your foot comfortably, whatever it takes, you're having respect for yourself. And you're pushing gently, not trying to provoke yourself, but noticing different sensations on different parts of your foot. One toe may like being pushed and the other one doesn't. Or there might be a spot in your arch that's rather tender. But when you push on your heel, it's like, your body says, deeper, please. Now I want you to pause on an interesting place. Whatever the sensation is that's interesting to you, maintain some light pressure there. As I'm speaking to you standing, I've been doing this with my hand, and that's another option for you. And I've definitely found a spot that is creating gurgles in my belly. I'm going to hang out here. And I invite you to notice. How are you connecting with your body in a new way? Is there a sensation that you don't usually think of that you're aware of right now? 
it's hard to ignore our body when there's physical pressure involved. It gets our attention. It brings us into our precious body. Where would I, the soul, be without this important vehicle to play my part? Now, relax your foot back to a comfortable position. If it wants a foot rest under it, give it one. See if you like it. Oh, and if that feels too high, maybe there's a book handy. Try putting that under one foot. And maybe under both. If the first one liked it and the second one's going, what about me? Hmm. And nestle into your chair. Find that support that's just right for you. If you don't have arm rests, sometimes it feels good to put a pillow in your lap so you can rest your arms on that. Or use your arm rests. Self-respect. And then with your ears tuned, what are the sounds you're noticing in your environment? And which ones perhaps make you want to sigh? There's subtle music coming from another unit. Lovely, peaceful music. Perhaps you hear the clock ticking and it's a familiar homey feeling. And then use your nose, take a deep breath. What are the fragrances in your room? And hopefully there aren't any odors that tell you, wow, I better go check where that smell's coming from. I once had a mouse die in a petition. The nose said it all. But if you're noticing fragrances that lift your spirits, this is a good way to begin a time of inner focus. Safe, peaceful, calm. And then let your attention go away from your outer senses. Remember some beautiful truths about yourself, the subtle soul, the one who is enlivening this body. Ah, I. The soul. I'm thankful for taking time to be with myself. I'm choosing now to notice those spiritual qualities that are natural to me. I have innate peace. I am naturally pure and powerful. I feel unlimited love for myself, for others, for this life. I'm radiating. Divine love to all souls. I have so much, it's overflowing. I radiate it to nature all around me. By nature, I am wise. I am intuitive. And I trust myself. I am a living soul, a being of light.
I am awakening every day to my innate potential. I am practicing my ability to experience being calm and alive. My spiritual power is awakening my self-respect. The dance of harmony between my mind and my intellect and my tendencies is a delight and connects me with my physicality, my body, in a natural partnership. Thank goodness. I have an inner nature that is so wise. And thank goodness, I'm becoming better and better at listening to it and heeding its directions. And I'm committed to practicing this daily. And I notice my breathing. And I consciously take a deep breath in, reminding myself that I am a peaceful soul. Om Shanti. And now my outer senses come back to play in this teamwork of being in a body on earth. And my mind may have thoughts, questions, as our discussion or any of our experiences brought a question to your mind or an insight, I'd love to hear from you. I really appreciate how you blend the physical with the spiritual because we're in bodies mm. and to be healthy in the body makes us healthier in the spirit. So I like that instead of just letting the body kind of sit and or waste away or not pay attention to it or whatever we do with the body, abuse it. <laughs> overuse it <laughs> so anyway i really appreciate that about um your presentations it really helps to um to combine and not mm -hmm. separate because you know when in raj yoga i think most people on know this that we want to be detached from the body but it's not a negative detachment it's more that we're not run by our bodies. So it's I nice like to that. honor and respect our bodies. <laughs> yes. So Where thank would you. we be without them? <laughs> <laughs> thank we you. Would be, for... But we wouldn't be in bodies. <laughs> we wouldn't be on earth. We wouldn't be having this conversation together. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's for sure. So thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate your clarity expressing that it's so true life is a dance among all of our parts <laughs> what i find interesting is um letting myself be easy letting myself ah. dance mm -hmm. and not to go through the motions but to be what i'm hearing from today's session is not to just go through the motions, but be sensitive to the effect that it has. 
Yes. That's what I'm hearing. Thank you. You've just highlighted what's so valuable. Noticing. And sometimes that requires pausing. And in a fast-paced world, we won't do that without being very intentional. Oh, I just ate a meal. Am I noticing? How do I feel about that? My appetite been satiated? Did I eat too much? I better notice or I won't have feedback for another time. It makes me think that even in the effort of being aware, conscious, and meditating, it definitely does make a difference for, for this soul. Um, since it's, since I'm the only one I got, <laughs> that's all yeah. I can gauge. <laughs> yes. Um, what it, what it takes to really be present, to really, um, mm. and to what, I, and I liked how you said you had a difficult incident that you couldn't even speak about for decades. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it just makes one question, well, perhaps there are places that in the body that I'm holding on because of um, resistance, but does it necessarily have to be spoken about or how do you release these traumas mm. in the body? How do you really, even though it's telling you something it may not be that I need to release it in the body, but how do I, um, make peace so that I can somatically make peace so that I'm not creating um, issues physically for myself? This is a wise question. The reason that I brought up the first tool being something that connects us with an experience of safety, such as somatic exercises. That's the only way I can move through things without re-traumatizing myself. Mm -hmm. The first step wouldn't be to start telling your stories in counseling. People that have gone that route have stories to tell. It can set you back and you can tell that from physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. But once we've connected with ourself in a new way without searching mm -hmm. for incidents i had found places in my body that had created postural changes and because i began to notice them instead of just driving my body to keep doing i created new opportunities for my body to be freer Sometimes there'd be an insight about why that pattern had cropped up. Or maybe I discovered through some new awareness of lab testing about biochemical imbalances, something that was contributing that I could now change. But I never went probing and digging. Things arise at the right time. And that's very important. We cannot heal trauma on our schedule. What we do if we push ourselves too much, too fast, we create overwhelm. And that's another trauma. So allowing and staying with a gentle practice, the meditation, the music, the dancing. There's a, a form of counseling called internal family systems that helps us look at any stuck sense scars or any that we haven't noticed yet. They may, in a very safe way, come to our attention and we can find out what they need us to learn so they can join the dance. And I'm picturing those Eastern European folk dances where everybody is holding hands in a circle. It's a community event. That's how we want to function too, isn't it? How did that do on addressing your question?
it made it um, seem e easier because um, sometimes our our worrying about or mm -hmm. feeling at a loss of what to do can um, well, I, you know, I want to see even my language could make it sound worse. Like I was going to use the word crippling, but that's not what I wanted to say. Right. You, and you noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, it, you know, it sounds so dramatic and so hopeless and whatever. Um, but it just uh, it doesn't give you permission. I think that's really that you don't you need to give your permission to be to flow, to be happy to um but you have to listen <laughs> yes that's what i'm hearing <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> right <laughs> when we do listen the messages that we need to hear will be noticed rather than they may have been going right over our head or maybe it just wasn't time to hear them before ah <sighs> trusting and by redeveloping a connection in simple ways between our mind and body stepping outdoors and letting the sun come in our eyes though we may have all these projects indoors on the computer say to give some time to connect with nature is a valuable tool it helps regulate my nervous system very well there's nothing I like more than taking my exercise in nature, not necessarily in traffic or indoors in the gym, but for me, it's two for one when I walk in nature. And it builds up our capacity to begin to notice the little wrinkles where there's a bump in the road and breathe into that. And gradually, let things free that may have been held in us because it was safer not to feel them at one time. <laughs> trust. Being in our body, that takes trust. And when we start to trust it, the harmony of the whole and our little daily interventions, we can see that they're building more of a sense of authenticity and ability to be present that inspires us to stick with it and as you said not not to have a particular goal but just that general i know i'm meant to be happy peaceful powerful and i'm letting it <laughs> unfold And maybe there's someone with a question that's just kind of forming itself. So we'll take a pause and notice what's going on in our body. And let the soul have all the limelight for a moment. And feel that peace. Hmm. It's so rich when we give ourselves moments to be mixed in with our doing. It appears my internet has become unstable. I wonder if you're hearing me. I'm frozen. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I hope it's not somatic. I know, I'm so grateful that I don't feel like I've gone into a dorsal vagal freeze. No, I'm just dealing with technology and aren't we lucky that we have it? No, the audio is good. And has a question arisen to the point where anyone would like to unmute themselves and ask? I 
I would like to ask Dr. Vinod how something, you know, how this could help enhance the um, allopathic um, medicine. You know, I, I know I'm not asking how you can begin to use it, but I'm just in your understanding of allopathic methods, how um, one developing this kind of somatic intuition. And what was the other word that Deborah used? Um, Interoception. Uh, that Yeah, that's a new word. And, mm -hmm. um, and I learned it from an allopathic physician mm -hmm. who has gone beyond her original training. She is studying okay. public health and neuroscience and yes. See if your screen can work. It's okay if it's frozen, at least we have your image on the screen. I am back and alive. Hey, back, now you don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to have a real person to look at. Yeah, just so. It, <laughs> but. Uh, Don't give I, a note. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. So he didn't get a chance. He didn't even start yet. But I was just curious, like how how you could see how this would be helpful. Yeah, it is very helpful because I had previously attended the three sessions with sister. And. Uh, Mm. You know, normally we go in opposite route. We use a sympathetic system. Something happens and uh, the heart races, the, mm -hmm. you go opposite. Uh, stress response, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what we are so used to generate. And this is something totally different. Generate the vagal response. It brings you to present the the stress response. It it uh, prepares you to protect from mm -hmm. some from outside. So it draws your attention from self to out, and this thing draws your attention from out to self, and that's very calming. I think mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you. Just a little exercise of, you know, pressing your uh, finger on the heel. You know, we stand on the ground and we hardly feel it. But this <laughs> little exercise, it brought the whole attention to here. What past worries and future agenda, everything was gone. Everything was just now. So it brings you to now, definitely. And uh, that uh, is very calming. I think. Oh, such truth. Thank you. So much newness. Thank goodness we're all still lifetime learners. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Thanks. pretty interesting. Thank you. I never thought of that inside out versus outside in healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Dropping down into our body is the fast track to safe and effective healing. We have to feel it to heal it. And we have to do that respectfully, gradually. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not forcing, but we're beginning to notice and allow and notice that that gives us more breadth. more delight mm -hmm. and then we move forward again a little more shall we conclude our time together with going within consciously Noticing the life force within us. I, the soul, get some air time.
as I allow my physical body to settle, I feel it appreciating my attention. It knows I will be there and gives me these few moments to go beyond the limits of time and space. Be truly free. Connecting with my deepest knowing of who I am. An eternal soul. Such happiness wells up when I remember I am peace. I am purity, love. I am a powerful being of light, well-guided and capable of guiding my physical body. I'm grateful that we're a team. And my body responds with a deep, spontaneous breath. And what are you noticing in yours? What tells you you're connected with your physical vehicle right now? Feel grateful? I am Om Shanti.